Hi everyone, today we're going to share with you a new product coming from Galit known as the Heat Face Ultra Thermal Interface. And what this are for? Well, for those of you who wouldn't want to deal with the mess when you apply thermal paste between the cold plate of your air cooler or liquid AIO to your processor, well, this is the solution where the application is pretty straightforward. Take for example, the uh, this is the cold plate of a liquid AIO. So what you need to do, right, instead of applying thermal paste on the processor itself, you just take this thermal interface on the cold plate. It's just like when you purchase a liquid AIO, there is a pre-paste. So this is exactly the same, but you will need to apply this yourself, which makes things very easy. Now, before I begin talking about specs and how to do the application, I'd like to thank Galit to have provided this sample pieces for me to share with you guys. This thermal interface do support AMD, which is on my left, and Intel platform on my right. The dimension on the thermal interface for AMD, which is 40 by 40, and for Intel is 30 by 40. And this thermal interface is in fact protected with two sheets of plastic or should I say plastic cover, as you can see. So at both ends. And the thickness of this thermal interface is 0.2 millimeter thick. I'll leave the uh, specification at the top where you can refer to. You can pause the video and to have a look. To apply the thermal interface on your cold plate of the liquid AIO or air cooler is pretty straightforward. Take for example, this is the liquid AIO, the cold plate. And for easy illustration, this is in fact the cold plate of this. So what is needed, right? First, clean off the cold plate with alcohol. Once you've done this, right, on this thermal interface itself, remove off the white piece first. Reason being, right, if you to remove off the translucent, you can't see where you're pasting. So if you were to do this, right, removing the uh, white piece, when you apply, see, you can see where you are placing the thermal interface on. So once you have placed that in, right, still leaving the uh, top sheet over here, then when you want to apply on the processor, all you needed is just to remove this. I will show you later. Now for today's test on the thermal performance of this thermal interface, I will be going against with Gerlitz own thermal paste, which is the GC Extreme, and also the regular thermal pad that I always use to do benchmark testing. So I will show you the three results. As illustrated to you, it's pretty straightforward. It took me less than five minutes to apply the thermal interface, and I will be conducting a benchmark on this thermal interface against the thermal paste from Galit, which is the GC Extreme, and the thermal pad, which I often use to do benchmark. Now, do take note that the room temperature right now is in fact, in my country, is 31.3 degrees Celsius. I will be using a Ryzen 9 7950X processor with a X670E Steel Legend board from SROC and my RAMs will be a dual 32GB kit that runs on bus speed of 6000MHz. Now besides this, right, as mentioned to you, my room temperature is 31 degrees Celsius so I wouldn't 
clock so high I will do some limitation but you will still be able to see the results what I've done on the OC Twinkle is to set the XMP profile of my RAMs which is to expo and next we'll be doing the offset on the voltage itself as you can see minus 50 and on advanced mode I've done the PPO2 settings which is manual these are all the settings so this will allow the processor to go at 5 gig or I would say around 4.9 gig to 5 gig then for curve optimizer right, I've set it to negative 15 to all costs and for the fans itself I only have the radiator fans if in fact I'll be doing on a open bench test so for the fan right I'll set it to performance as you can see over here and it will trigger to the max of what is required to cool down the radiator now let me take you to windows and to show you what other things that you need to take note in windows I'll be using three application Cinebench R23 to run the stress test and for the stats that show over here right I'm making use of the hardware info to show the OSD on Eugene Valley benchmark application so these are the sets that you will see and on my extreme left this is just a graph to show you that I run the test before I conduct the recording and how I do the test is for each application be it the thermal paste the thermal pad or the thermal interface I will run the uh, application sitting bench and do a stress test for 30 minutes once done with the 30 minutes right I will let it idle for 10 minutes then on the actual run I will do a 10 minutes throttle chat throttle test and you'll be able to see the stats over here now speaking about the stats take note on the CPU temperature the call clock frequency and the call voltage that is being drawn and this is the call usage and this will be the power package that you will draw in order to sustain the 5 gig 4.9 gig or 5 gig mark and there are other temperature readings like the motherboard the m.2 and my two ddr5 rams and earlier on i showed you on uefi where i've set the uh, pbo2 so these are the readings over here it will show now besides this right as it it's going to show you three interface on the benchmark where each interface right belongs to one um, item which is either the thermal pad thermal paste or the thermal interface I will paste a logo over here just to show that that's the reading for the benchmark let's begin <music> The results are out just a friendly reminder that my room temperature is 31 degrees celsius plus minus and as mentioned to you how i conduct for each application so once i mount this on the uh, system itself right i will first run 30 minutes to let all this application bond between the co plate of my liquid aio to the uh, ihs of the processor so once that's done right I let it sit for 10 minutes then I run the actual 10 minutes recording which you've seen earlier now during the idle time before I conduct the recording I have really noticed the temperature between all this application now of course for the thermal pad it will never be as good as thermal paste but to my surprise during the idle time okay let me just play so as you can see these are live these are during idle time okay I should stop here this is where I start the recording now for the idle time itself right when I look at the when I look at the temperature 
between the thermal paste and the thermal pad, I mean the thermal interface, look at the idle time for CPU, which is 48 on thermal paste. The thermal solution is only one degree up. But take note on the uh, rest of the component. The motherboard on the thermal paste is 41.5 degrees Celsius. The M.2 is 46 and the RAMs are at 43. Look at the thermal interface. The motherboard is 37. The M.2 is 41 and the RAMs is around 40, which is much lower as compared to the thermal paste. With this said, I can foresee that this will definitely do a better result as in like the thermal interface. And why do I say so? I let it run and I did the recording for 10 minutes. So let me just pull to the last two minutes, which is around here. Okay, last three minutes. Now as it runs, right, you can forego the uh, thermal pad. In fact, it's not really that great because it's hovering around 4.9 gig to 5 gig. But for the thermal paste, definitely can sustain on 5 gig. Same goes to the thermal interface. Take a look at the temperature of the rest of the component. See? A great difference. And look at the temperature that's on load and the clock frequency. In fact, most of the time, when I use the uh, thermal interface, right, the clock frequency will never hit below 5 gig, same as the thermal paste. And it's as good, in fact, it's as good as the thermal paste. And best part of all, look at the uh, voltage that is being drawn. See, it's much higher compared to your thermal paste. Meaning to say, the frequency that is running, right, is much more as compared to the thermal paste. See? So I would say that this application does work. In fact, it's as good as using a thermal paste. It's just that less of the mess. And best part, it takes only five minutes of my time to apply the whole application and to mount it on my system and let it run. Else for the thermal paste, right? I would need to paste it, spread it nicely and to mount it, Make sure that it's squashed nicely between the core plate and the uh, IHS on your processor. Else for this, right, you have seen what I've shown you. I just plug it in, screw it down, and that's it. The moment of truth to remove this off and see what's happening between the uh, core plate and the IHS. Now, please note that if you want to remove any thermal paste or any pads or whatsoever, make sure that you run the system first, let it heat up, then turn off your system and make sure you power down your PSU and such or to disconnect all the AC and such before you, you know, touch anything on the motherboard itself so that there are no current. Now I've already taken out two screws. So right now I'm just going to pull this off from my motherboard to see how it looks like. Okay, wow. Okay, off. Now there is a bit of tension due to the suction itself. And you can see, this is how it looks like. And best part is that, as you know, for AM5 platform, you have all these gaps over here. So it doesn't over, you know, overflow to it and I was quite shocked that this area not covered but yet the temperature is still that good so this proven that this pace right I mean this uh, thermal interface is good stuff now as to see how easy is it to clear see it's that easy it just comes off so you don't have to worry that it will stick to the cold plate See, I can easily remove it. See, it's out. Easy application and easy to remove. I feel that it's worth 
Okay, I'm just going to clear the mess later, just to show you that you know it's it can be easily removed. It's just like peeling an orange. That simple. There you have it, the Heat Face Ultra coming from Galit, known as the Thermal Interface. If you guys want to know more information about this thermal interface, you can click on the URL in my description and to check out the product itself. Speaking of which, right, these are not very expensive. In fact, I got the information from Galit. For the AMD thermal interface, it costs $10 USD. And for the uh, Intel, it's slightly lower, which is at $9.50 if I'm not wrong. So if you guys want to know more information and want to purchase this product, hit down to my description and you can click on the URL. We did say thank you to Galit to have provided all this sample, which I wanted to try before their launch date. Thank you very much. And for those of you who are actually new to my channel, welcome to my channel. If you like my content, do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button. Till then, take care. Goodbye. See ya.